on the hunt for a refined, high-tech, zero-emissions van. Well, this is the new Mercedes eVito, and in today's review, we'll see if it's your perfect next vehicle. When it launched in the UK in 2020, the Mercedes E Vito was not only the German brand's first fully electric van to arrive here, but also one of the first mid-sized electric vans in general. And while the segment is still relatively niche, this van faces tough competition, namely from Stellantis Group offerings like the Citroen E Dispatch, the Peugeot E Expert, and the Vauxhall Vivaro E. To keep competitive, the eVito was recently updated with a larger 66 kilowatt hour battery pack and fast charging capability, and that's the model we're reviewing today. So, is it a better alternative than those French rivals, and should this be your first electric van of choice? Given that the eVito is just essentially an all-electric version of the standard Vito, there's very few exterior design differences aside from the electric badging near the door mirrors and a blue E on the tailgate. The front end is a very familiar sight. As standard, you get halogen headlights with high beam assist, and this adjusts the high and low beam on the fly, depending on the traffic situation. This is the entry-level progressive model. If you climb up the range to get the top-grade premium model, you get a chrome front grille and front fog lights. Just below the headlights, we have the van's charging port, which pops open like so. It supports conventional AC charging as well as rapid DC charging, and that's the first with this latest version of the Vito. We'll have more on the charging times in the driving section of the review. The Vito is offered in two different body lengths. This is the L2 or long. It measures 5,240 millimeters long, 2,250 millimeters wide, and 1,910 millimeters high, with a turning circle of 11.8 meters. So this is a very impressive mid-sized van for negotiating into and out of tight parking spaces and driving down narrow city streets. If you think you'll need more space in the back, you can go with the L3 extra long variant, and that extends the length of the vehicle by around 230 millimeters, on par with L2 variants of the E-Dispatch and Vox or Vivaro E, though width and height stay exactly the same. As standard, you get 17-inch steel wheels with the e Vito. Nothing too flashy about the design, but they do a nice job at absorbing undulations around town. Upgrade to the premium model, still 17 inches in size, but they're now in an alloy wheel design and aerodynamically optimized. You also get heated and electrically adjustable door mirrors as standard, plus twin side-loading doors for easy access to the cargo area. In L2 form, the eVito offers a load compartment of 2,830 millimeters in length or 3,060 millimeters if you go with L3, a width of 1,685 millimeters and a height of 1,390 millimeters. This is a very generously sized cargo area up to par with what you get with rivals in this class and it delivers an overall load volume of 6 cubic meters or 6.6 .6 cubic meters with L3. But what's most impressive is that it's unchanged from the diesel Vito. In fact, the electric drivetrain, so the batteries under the floor of this cargo area, have not compromised the storage on offer whatsoever. And it's more than enough space to comfortably accommodate free Euro pallets. Unfortunately, due to the various updates the eVito has undergone over the last few years, payload is no longer as generous as it once was. It's witnessed a reduction of 120 kilograms for both L2 and L3. This L2 Progressive model delivers a payload of 807 kilograms, including the driver. This reduces to 770 kilograms for the L3 Progressive model, and L2 Premium reduces this even further, down to 749 kilograms kilograms. By comparison, Rival E-Dispatch, E-Partner and Vivaro E models offer payloads of up to 1,275 kilograms. So even though the E-Vito weighs more than the regular Vito, it can't hold as much and that's due to the additional weight of the larger batteries underneath the cargo area. Also, if you approach the E-Vito's max payload, 
do expect the electric range to suffer. More on that in the driving section coming up. But before that, let's explore what you get with this L2 Progressive model. Six tie down points to attach objects to the floor that like to roll around. The floor itself is made from a TPO plastic covering. It's protective and no scratch. You get wood side paneling and a full height bulkhead. Of course, there's many other options you can add to your configuration to really get the most out of the load space here and have it meet your particular requirements. So if you'd like to dive into those in more detail, get in touch with our team via the number in the banner below. So what's the eVito like to drive, not just around town, but on country roads and A roads? Let's find out. Okay guys, let's talk about the single battery option available for the new version of the eVito. You get a much larger 66 kilowatt hour battery pack and that's housed beneath the cargo area. And this is mated to a single 85 kilowatt electric motor driving the front wheels. This develops 114 horsepower and up to 360 newton meters of torque for a respectable zero to 60 time of 12 seconds. So yes, it's not the fastest van off the block, but it still feels fairly rapid thanks to the acceleration on tap provided by the single speed transmission. At lighter loads it feels surprisingly nimble around town and it has no issue at all getting up to speed on the dual carriageway or motorway. It just starts to strain around 70 miles an hour so it feels much more relaxed at those slower cruising speeds. This 66 kilowatt hour battery pack gives you an all electric range of up to 162 miles on the WLTP cycle which is a massive improvement over the last model's 41 kilowatt hour pack which gave you a range of around 92 miles pretty poor though this is still a lot less than I would expect an electric vehicle to achieve in 2022. By comparison rival e-dispatch, e-partner and Vivaro e-vans deliver a 205 mile range thanks to the larger 75 kilowatt hour battery pack and the 90 kilowatt hour pack found in this van's passenger oriented sibling the EV Totora is good for an all electric range of 225 miles and hopefully we'll see that pack um, introduced to the EV Toro range in the future. In defense of Mercedes it reckons that the EV Toro will comfortably cover the daily commute for the majority of motorists citing recent research that the average van driver in the UK and Europe covers 62 miles per day. However, you do need to weigh up here if you'll be able to adapt your lifestyle to the range that the eVito offers. Two speed limit options are available. 75 miles per hour is configured as standard, though you can limit the van to 50 miles per hour if you would like. And because the eVito is fully electric, it outputs absolutely zero grams per kilometer of CO2. Charging isn't as dire as it used to be, thanks to the fast charging capability with the premium model. If you plug it into a domestic three pin plug, it will do a flat to full charge in around 20 hours. If you need this to be a bit quicker, consider installing a seven kilowatt wall box either outside your office, your garage, or at home somewhere, and this will cut that charging time down to around six and a half hours. The premium model has a CCS rapid charging port and that supports a 80 kilowatt max charging capacity. This would enable you to do a 10 to 80% charge in just 35 minutes from a DC charger. So that's great if you plan on using the eVito for a longer journey, you can stop off at a motorway service station, plug it in, grab some lunch and you'll be able to comfortably complete your longer journey without that range anxiety looming overhead which was the case with the uh, previous model. Like other fully electric vehicles, the eVito can take advantage of regenerative braking to recover energy through deceleration. You can toggle between five different recuperation modes via the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. As default, you'll be in the D minus mode and this achieves the fastest rate of deceleration. So much so that when you lift up on the accelerator like I am now, the brake lights will illuminate from behind. In this mode, it's possible to drive just using the accelerator for the majority of your time, though in order to come to a complete stop, you will need to press the brake. Therefore, it's not as efficient as the e-pedal function you'll find with some Nissan electric vehicles. If you want to have less severe recuperation, you can switch between the other modes with a flick of the right paddle shifter. The D++ mode has absolutely no braking recuperation whatsoever. When you lift up off the accelerator, instead of recovering energy, the van will coast. And this is particularly handy for being efficient at motorway speeds. The D Auto mode is new to this latest version of the eVito, and it uses radar sensors to switch between the best possible mode for the situation, whether that's 
starts coasting or recovering energy via deceleration. So this provides a nice balance between comfort and efficiency. You can switch between three different driving modes via a blink and you'll miss it button on the dashboard beneath the display. And these moderate accelerator response and motor power output to maximize range efficiency. As standard, you'll be in the efficiency mode and you won't find much need to switch from this. Though if you do want more oomph from standstill, do stick it into comfort mode. And efficiency plus is ideal for when you're running low on range and you absolutely need to reach your destination. It will adjust the air conditioning to maximize range as much as possible. In terms of suspension, it's not a particularly settled ride, but the 17-inch alloy wheels do a nice job at absorbing light undulations and speed bumps around town. Those harsher abrasions, though, like aggressive potholes, send a thump not only throughout the front space, but the cargo area at the back, especially when you go over them at speed. These side bolsters are not prominent enough to hold you in place and stop you from jostling around the cabin. With a gross weight of 3.2 tons, how does the eVito handle? Well, thanks to the large battery pack under the floor, it gives the eVito a low center of gravity, which delivers a nice and stable ride most of the time. Indeed, you'll notice that it feels impressively composed through tight corners and bends with very little body lean. I'll briefly talk about the pedals. They nicely line up with your feet. However, the brake is usually an issue with electric vehicles, and sadly, that's the case with the eVito. It's just too spongy, making it difficult to gauge how much pressure you need to provide in order to slow down completely. However, on the bright side, if you are in the max region setting, you'll hardly ever need to use it unless you need to come to a complete stop. If you're upgrading from the diesel-powered Vito, one thing you'll notice is the lack of noise generated by the powertrain when cruising at low city speeds. That's not to say it's completely whisper quiet though. Like any van, if you've got an empty cargo area, you'll hear noise bouncing around. At motorway speeds, those 17-inch wheels don't do the best job at preventing sound from seeping into the cabin. And under harsh acceleration, the motors kick into the gear and you'll hear this through a harsh humming noise. Visibility goes without saying really, it's excellent. You get a lofty position over the bonnet, providing a perch view at junctions and roundabouts. Deep side windows deliver an almost panoramic view of your surroundings, and those large side mirrors give you a great view of what's behind you. UNCAP awarded the eVito a gold medal for commercial vehicle safety, and the body even said that it represents one of the best commercial vans on sale to those interested in safety. Standard features include automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, attention assist, which will detect when you're drowsy inside the cabin for those longer journeys, crosswind assist, helping you keep in the center of your lane, headlight assist, cruise control, and hill start assist. You can spec more advanced safety features via the optional driver assistance package. This will set you back around £1,640. Here you get everyone's favorite safety feature, lane keep assist with a rain sensor, adaptive distance assist, and this will help you maintain a safe distance from the vehicle in front, say on a motorway, and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. And this will illuminate the side mirrors with a signal alerting you of any vehicles passing close by on either the left or right hand side. Mercedes commercials warranty is pretty standard, three years and unlimited mileage. By comparison, one of this van's key rivals, the Toyota Prius Electric, which is essentially the same van as the E-Dispatch, can be had with a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. Though with this warranty, you get eight years or 100,000 miles of guarantee for the battery pack, as well as three years of roadside assistance and breakdown coverage. As standard with the eVito, you get a reversing camera with dynamic guidelines and a 180 degree view of the van surroundings. Sadly though, front and rear parking sensors are locked behind this premium model, when really they should come as standard, especially when helping you to negotiate into these tight spaces. But as you can see, those dark guidelines do an excellent job. Inside, the eVito looks near identical to the regular Vito, aside from some minor changes with the instrument cluster. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but perhaps a bit disappointing for those who are expecting this all-electric version to bring its own style and character. It's nowhere near as plush as inside the new EQV with hardly any soft touch materials on display. The build quality feels really solid thanks to the use of these robust 
durable plastics. There's some material variety on display giving this van somewhat of a premium feel that you would expect from a Mercedes model such as the gloss black infotainment cluster and air vents and the minimal use of chrome wrapped around the door handles. As you can see a dual passenger seat comes as standard and headroom is a complete non-issue. I'm 5'8 and I'm miles away from that roof lining but due to how the roof slopes down towards the bonnet if you've got three people in the front, it can start to feel quite cramped. This Mercedes van has a few quirks that will throw off a few motorists transitioning over from other branded vehicles. We have a key slot, so you need to put the key in to start this all-electric vehicle, and I really would have just preferred a start-stop button here. And instead of a conventional gear lever, we have a steering wheel mounted stick to change between the gears, where the wiper controls would normally be. These have been moved to the indicator stalk on the left-hand side. An electronic parking brake is a noticeable absence here. Instead, we have a foot operated brake pedal located to the far left hand side. And to release this, you toggle the lever on the far right hand side of the dashboard. All of this amounts to quite a lot of faffing around before you set off, especially when you first hop in the Evito, you'll be spending 10 minutes or so just finding where everything is. There are a few optional extras that you can configure that I feel should have come as standard with the trim levels, namely ambient lighting, by no means an essential option, but it would have added a lot of character to the inside of the Evito. And you don't even get vanity mirrors on the sun visors, you've got to pay for those. The seats are upholstered in a black Kaluma leather as standard. They don't look particularly flashy, but the material feels durable and it is very easy to clean. You can have a leatherette trim as an optional extra. The driver's seat is heated as standard, but in order to get four-way adjustable lumbar support, you'll have to climb up the range and go for the premium model. We don't have that as we've got the progressive model, and after around an hour of driving, I've started to experience some discomfort and back pain. So if you plan on using the Evito for longer journeys, definitely consider that higher spec grade. On the bright side, the driver's front space is nice and generous. Lots of room to stretch out and get comfortable. Adjustment for the seat is very good. I can pump myself up really high, getting a lofty view of the road ahead, or down if you prefer a lower seating position. Of course, we're limited to how far back we could go due to the bulkhead behind us, but let's give it a go. Okay, this is all the way far back now, and drivers who are 6 or over will see that they've got quite a lot of legroom to work with. As standard, you get a multifunction steering wheel that's manually adjustable for reach and rake. You can pull it away from you, towards you, up and down. It's very easy to find that ideal position for you. If you go with the premium model, you get a leather wrapped wheel, adding more of a premium feel inside the cabin here. But the standard wheel you get it's pretty high quality, it feels nice and grippy. Behind the steering wheel, we have a tiny display in the instrument cluster showing very basic information, such as how much charge is left in the battery and which driving mode you've selected. This is complemented by the Mercedes Audio 30 infotainment system that has been greatly improved over the systems that came before it with the Vito, some of which didn't even have DAB radio. Thankfully, this one does, plus Bluetooth and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's still not perfect. At seven inches, this touchscreen is quite small by today's standards. It's slow at loading. The graphics aren't particularly sharp. There's a bit of input delay when navigating around. And the screen is positioned dead center in the dashboard. It's not angled towards the driver, making it difficult to see when driving along. If you get tired of Mercedes software, you can always mirror your smartphone apps onto the display via Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's what I've been doing. You can also upgrade this screen slightly to the Audio 40 system. System. That'll set you back around £400. Exactly the same setup here, but you get integrated navigation for plotting routes from A to B. Your new Evito comes with a free year subscription to the Mercedes Me app, giving you extra functionality via your smartphone. You can remotely lock or unlock the van using your phone. You can check the vehicle's battery level. You can show where it's parked. You can plot a route from A to B accounting for charging points. And you can preheat or cool the cabin while the van is being charged. Air conditioning comes as standard, particularly handy for a summer's day like today. But you can upgrade and get the Firmatronic automatic climate control for around 695 pounds. This automatically controls temperature, airflow and air distribution in two zones throughout the cabin. It's always nice to see physical controls for the air conditioning below the display. It's really easy to adjust these different settings while on the go, except the driver won't be able to see what they're doing with the temperature as it's angled just too far away. 
On the left hand side we have a couple of USB ports, one for charging and one for smartphone mirroring, plus a tiny cubby. The cubby on the right is much more generously sized, you could easily fit a couple of bits and bobs in there, perhaps even a smartphone. The front space is abound with cubby holes, generously sized compartments atop the dashboard, accompanied by cup holders on either side, deep door bins easily swallowing my bulky bottle fits nicely in there, and the glove box is generously sized, enough space for the manuals and other bits and bobs. Just to say, there's plenty of space for all your odds and ends. So what's comfort like in the other front seats? Let's slide over to the middle and check that out. Well, the immediate problem is here that the middle passenger is going to have to straddle this rather bulky transmission tunnel, meaning their right leg is going to be in the driver's space, which is quite awkward. There's a lot more space on offer in this seat. Slide on over here. It's just about as wide as the driver's area, so quite a lot of room to stretch out and get comfortable. But the downside is this bench isn't adjustable in any way whatsoever, so you're stuck with this leg room, which is quite restricted for me at 5'8", so passengers six foot over will really struggle to get comfortable here. And because you can't come back with the bench, uh, you won't be able to extend leg room in any way. So the front space offered by the eVito is pretty generous, although there's certainly some improvements that could be made for a next generation model. Right, let's run through the trim levels and pricing now so you can see what you get with each of the variants. Entry level progressive models start from £43,600 and you get a reversing camera that shows up on that display, a heated driver's seat and twin side loading doors. Premium models enhance your configuration from £46,900 and it's my trim of choice because you get all the things you really need like the 17 inch light aerodynamic alloy wheels, electrically adjustable door mirrors, lumbar support for the driver's seat, more attractive exterior styling like metallic paint and front and rear parking sensors. Once you've chosen your ideal trim, there's a range of add-ons to consider to really personalize your configuration. Some highlights here include these roof rails that can carry an 150 kilogram load, the chrome interior package, and heated front passenger seats. If you need a hand specking your perfect eVito, get in touch with our team via the link below. So guys, should you buy, lease or finance the new Mercedes eVito? Well, there's lots of advantage of choosing this all electric version over its combustion powered sibling. Firstly, you still get that generously sized load area that hasn't been compromised by the electric drivetrain, which in itself delivers a smooth and relaxing driving experience. Plus, by going all electric, you benefit from lower running costs, exemption from congestion and ultra low emission zone charges, and great company car tax savings. It's just a shame that the larger batteries have reduced payload. The infotainment system and interior quality could be better for a vehicle from a premium brand. It's decently priced, but it is more expensive than its French alternatives that do things more impressively in certain areas. And that 162 mile range, simply put, isn't going to be for everyone. But overall, if you're after a mid-sized electric van with a great load space and is easy to drive, then the Mercedes eVito should most certainly be on your list. If you found the review helpful, guys, give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And once you are subscribed, double check that you've clicked the notification bell, because when you click it, you're gonna get notified when we upload the next car review. But that's it, thanks for watching, take care, and safe driving. Safe driving. Thank you